Covering the veteran artists from pop, rock, soul, country, folk, and blues, this is the VVN Music Podcast. Today's program is brought to you by VVN Music. Get all the latest news on veteran musical artists who have been recording for 20 years or more at vvnmusic.com. Hi and welcome to the VVN Music Podcast. I'm Roger Wink and today we have the return of the great former Yes singer, John Anderson. When we talked with Anderson last year, he was in the midst of a project with Jean-Luc Ponty, which resulted in a tour and a live album of originals and covers from both Anderson's and Ponty's careers. Earlier this month, John released a new project, this time with Swedish guitar master Ronja Stolt. Their new album, Invitation of Knowledge, returns Anderson to his long-form pseudo-orchestral pieces with only four multi-movement compositions on the album. Anderson and Stolt first met in 2014 on one of those rock music cruises and ended up collaborating on stage before the trip was over. Like with Ponty, the two artists composed their new album over long distances, trading files until each piece was complete. For Anderson, this is not all that he has on his musical plate. He's also been writing new music with former Yes bandmates Rick Wakeman and Trevor Rabin, who are coming together as ARW. The new band will tour North America and Europe starting in October and running into 2017. Also expect a new album from the trio. We talked with John at his cottage recording studio in his home on the California coast. It's a great pleasure to talk with you again. Congratulations on the upcoming album. Thank you. You know, the last time we talked, you were releasing your album with Jean-Luc Ponty. And this time it's a collaboration with Swedish legend Ronja Stolt. John Luke was well known in America because he worked with Frank Zappa back in the late 60s and all of his albums since then. But I think Ronja hasn't had as much exposure here in America. Is that a bit of a challenge in getting the album out there and marketing it? Not really. Uh, he's very well known in Europe and uh, he's very well known in the progressive rock sort of world. And that's how we met, actually. I was... Uh, asked to go on a boat trip from Miami to um, Bahamas on this sort of prog rock boat. We've got 2,500 crazy progressive rock fans and uh, a lot of great musicians, as it happened. And I was asked to join that uh, trip, but that's when I met Ronya. If I remember correctly, you ended up rehearsing and playing a whole side from Tales of Topographic Oceans on that trip, correct? Yes, it was exhausting, because I was... We didn't get on stage till midnight, and it had been a long day already, but we got through the song, and we did a couple of other sort of pretty well-known Yes pieces. It was like uh, Transatlantic are a great bunch of guys, wonderful musicians, and they invited me to get together, and I said, well, let's do something really big. And I thought, why did I think of doing that? It's crazy. But it worked out okay. You wrote your last album with Jean-Luc by trading emails over the Internet. I guess you've done the same thing with with Ronya this time. Were there any big differences in working with the two artists and doing the writing? Just very different, uh, because I I actually had all these songs sitting around. You know, I've been working with a lot of musicians over the last 10 years through the Internet. So I had these songs that I really liked, and I sent them to Ronya, and he started sort of uh, sketching out the music, changing some of the music that was already there, developing it into a, a project and uh, it did a remarkable job and uh, we only met twice we met uh, two years ago on the boat and then we met a couple of m- months ago in uh, Dallas he was performing there with uh, Steve Hackett and I just happened to be working in that area so we got together and just to say hi and it was great to see him again but we we did most of our work through the internet and uh, a very excellent way of working. Is it hard to do that over the no, internet, no. though? You say it's excellent, but is it is it hard? Is there any... Not really, no. We're on the same planet. Right, but I guess with digital also, there isn't any loss in, in quality no, and so forth. No, not at all. And, you know, he, he would send me some work, and then I would sing on some of his work, and then send it right back, and then he would develop it, and... Within the framework of a couple of weeks, we'd done three or four songs uh, of, of the songs I sent, plus 
me singing on some of his music to sort of dovetail the ideas together, and it just seemed to work out naturally. You mentioned the three or four songs, and it, from listening to the album, you've kind of gone back to some of the stylistic ways that you did things back in the 70s with Yes and That. There are really only four pieces on the album, but with multiple movements to each of the pieces. With everything that is the music world today and the fact that so many people are buying digitally and they're downloading, Apple picking track by track, did you ever consider when you released this album to have the iTunes and the Amazons of the world only sell by complete pieces and not track by track? No, I I don't think about things like that. I was thinking more about music and what music can do to you. You spend time listening to uh, a piece of music and you, you get... Time is uh, you're not limited to time. It's like watching a good movie. You, you forget where you are, and all of a sudden you finish the movie, and then you think, wow, what happened to the last two hours or what, an hour and a half, you know? So listening to music is the same for me. If I'm listening to some music that I like, and uh, I, I lose track of time. So making music isn't really specifically to make a single or to make a radio song. Music is more important to me but for example on the first piece on the album there are three separate tracks within that piece you feel that each of those tracks stands on its own or is it better as the full three movement yeah i think the idea is that if people want to hear a certain section they can actually just uh, log it in with the uh, with the cd or go to track six or track three and you know, my wife, she wants to hear track nine over and over. So I just love that you have the choice. And uh, the best way, obviously, is to listen to it all the way through. And that's what I do when I listen to it. I actually put it in the car and drive around and listen to it when I'm shopping and doing things, going down to L.A. and seeing Trevor and people, like, working on other projects. And just that listening to it all the way through is just a, a timeless sort of event for me. It's it's a complex album in that it's it's almost symphonic in scope. Was that your aim when you were writing the music and yeah. producing it? It was the first thing we spoke about, and I said to Ronya that no matter what, we'll just try this adventure in music and then go through the journey, and we'll realize in about two or three months if it's working. So don't worry about things not fitting together just yet. We'll find a a way to connect them. And then he would start working on some music, and then I would sing on his music, and that would connect a piece to a piece to a piece. And then you finish up with uh, some of the... One of the tracks was 32 minutes long, and that's why we sort of edited that down so that um, Knowing, which is the second movement, uh, we edited the end of that to the very end so that uh, knowing which is the second movement is is 20 minutes 19 minutes and then the last movement is 11 minutes which is no so it was actually all together at one point but it was just too much for me to listen to and I thought you know let's just edit it and and use it for the last track and uh, see how it feels and it actually felt great so you know as you said I've done this many times with yes and I've done it on my own, uh, doing solo projects. So, you know, in a way you get used to how it's going to work. And uh, thankfully, it all seems to have worked very nicely. The arrangements and the, the instrumentation on the album also give a very strong feel of a full symphonic orchestra, yet the, the majority, if I'm not mistaken, is is just a band. Um, who is it that you have playing with you on the album? Well, Roy organized the musicians, some friends of his that he's worked with uh, in uh, Sweden. Tom Brislin actually was invited to play, and he's worked with Yes a couple of times, and he's a good friend. He lives in New York. And uh, it's funny that uh, what I would do, I would receive the music, and uh, because it was done over a year and a half period when uh, I was touring and so uh, Ronnie was touring with Steve Hackett. So we'd have time to reflect on the music and go back to it months or two later. And then I'd listen to the music and think, okay, it needs some orchestration. So I would write some orchestration and send it to Ronnie, and then he would get his keyboard player to modify what I was playing and make it 
work with the sounds that he was creating. So we sort of hand in hand did a lot of that orchestration, which I like doing. When you receive the musical tracks, did you uh, do you have to book studio time, or do you have your no, own no, studio no, where I'm you can? In my cottage uh, in, in the middle of Central California, in, in a beautiful place in the world, and I have a little cottage at the back of the house up the hill, and uh, I'm here now. Actually, I'm just uh, working on some music today, so. Uh, it's my second home. You know, I just walk across the garden and uh, every morning and come and do some work. And that's what I like to do. Any plans at all to tour behind the album? Uh, that's up to really uh, how well it sells, of course. If, if it reaches a lot of people, the, 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 the energy will, by next, we think next summer, we'll probably do some concerts uh, to re-energize uh, people's in, interest in the, in the work. And we we also have some new music we've been writing, so we might just re-record some new stuff and then release that next summer along with the album again, and then probably do a couple of shows, some special shows in Sweden, maybe. So this is a project that could continue into the yeah, future. Yeah, it's an ongoing it's an ongoing uh, relationship, like like I have with Jean Luc. We're always talking about the next step and the next. Uh, potential adventure together. Well, that was going to be my next question, was that, uh, you know, the album you did with Jean-Luc was was basically a live album, though it had the feel of a studio album. And uh, I was wondering if you were going thinking about going into the studio with Jean-Luc. Oh, well, I don't know exactly what the next project will be, but we're thinking of something very different from what we just did. Uh, what we did, just did was let's get together with your band and we'll put on a show and travel around a bit and then get to know each other. And, of course, it would be wonderful to go in with him and the band and do some recording in a studio in, in uh, yes, studio in Paris, something like that, where we just all get together for a couple of weeks and, and uh, invent some new music. It would just be fantastic. But uh, we'll see what happens, really. We'll return to our interview with John Anderson in just a minute. For over 10 years, VVN Music has been publishing the latest news, along with reviews and other stories, about the veteran artists of pop, rock, soul, country, folk, and blues. While there are hundreds of music sites on the net, VVN Music exclusively covers only those musicians and industry people who have been recording for 20 years or more. Find out who is where with tour announcements, what new music and expanded classics are on the release schedule, where musicians will be appearing on U.S. television, and what's selling in countries around the world with our various special features. Plus, you'll get news on a timely basis with stories from around the world courtesy of musicnews.com from England and Noise 11 from Australia. BVN Music is your one-stop site for all your favorite musicians from throughout your life. That's BVN Music. Dot com. You are a very busy man, and you've also already announced that you will be working again with Rick Wakeman and, and Trevor Rabin as ARW. Uh, where is that project? Well, we're stand? just working on the writing. We've just done some writing this last couple of months. Uh, Rick's just finished a big project he's doing in London, uh, King Arthur, which I believe is amazing. And Trevor's just finished uh, a, a movie or a TV movie, actually, the two call the last three or four months. So now we're going to get together in July, August, rehearse in uh, September, and uh, actually go on tour in October. So we're very busy. Keep it, keep us out of trouble. Yeah, I know you have a world tour starting in October. At least you've you've put the, the American leg of it, but there's plans for a world tour in 2017. Uh, are you going to be fitting in the recording of a new album? I think we're just going to record uh, three or four songs, not so much an album. I don't think albums are really relative at the moment from, from my standpoint. I'd rather do uh, projects, we call them. So if we do three or four songs and then... As we're touring, write a couple of more things, and then in between touring, finish off them. So next spring, a couple of more songs for the European tour. I like that idea. I, I like the idea of, you know, in the old days, you, you make an album and you put all your energy into it and you go and you give it to the record company 
And, you know, it's like going to Vegas and putting all your money on 26, hoping that it's going to be a jackpot. And, of course, it doesn't happen every time. So I think I'd rather just do sort of ideas now and again. I think this is just a different way of thinking. You can release music all the time. I've got this project coming up next year, which uh, encompasses that, that the idea that music is more important than how many you sell, are you in the charts, are you famous, da 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 And after a while, you've gone through that experience. All you want to do is create music without having to worry if people are going to hear it. So what you do, you make music, you put it on the Internet, and eventually people hear it if they're interested. And uh, none of this going to a record company and hoping that they're going to promote it well and so on and so on. You, with the tour that you are planning starting in October, is any thoughts on what people should expect uh, musically? Obviously, you'll have new a music. Wild and amazing show. <laughs> That's what I want to do. <laughs> That's all I want to do. A wild and amazing show. So that hey, if I if I'm enjoying it and I feel it's really damn good, then I you know. That's all that matters because if it works, people will get it and. Uh, It'll be a great thing. You can't go around really saying, okay, we're going to go on uh, on tour and we're going to be like a, a yes band. We'll obviously do some yes music because we wrote it. You know, I wrote a lot of music with Trevor and uh, 9125 and Talk, which are, Talk is a great album. Not many people know. And, of course, I've written a lot of things with Rick, and that encompasses a show all together with maybe some standard classic yes pieces of music but generally we just want to put on a great show that people love it sounds like you are pretty much booked somewhere into about 2020 yeah. but uh is there any other projects that you might have coming up over the next few years that uh that you oh, know well of? the next big one will be next uh, year next uh Probably next summer when I release the Zamran project, it's the Z A M A R N. Zamran is a, is a sort of all encompass all encompassing project relating to um, six in, interrelated projects that I've been writing over the last ten years. <laughs> doesn't doesn't sound real, but it is. I I can't imagine the amount of sleep you must not get trying to to keep all of these things no, going. No, actually, it's funny. I sleep very well, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just 72 this year, and I'm very into, I like having a good nap in the afternoon after I've done some work in the morning, and I work out, I have a nap, and then I do some work, and then, I, you know, do some cooking. I love cooking and relaxing with my beautiful wife, Jane, watching some crazy TV shows that we love, and, uh, it's, that's our daily life, because then we go on the road and it's a different world. Being on the road is like a little bit wild out there and uh, exhausting. But the shows are fantastic. We're doing great concerts. Anderson Ponte was an amazing show. People loved it, whoever came. My solo shows, I've been loving doing them for the last uh, on and off 10 years. And now we're going to be uh, Anderson, Raven Wakeman, which is going to be terrific. Yeah, well, congratulations on on everything. I uh, I wish you all the luck. It's always a pleasure talking to you, and uh, I hope everything goes well with all of your Good. various projects. I wish you well. Our thanks to John Anderson for once again talking with us. His new album with Roynja Stolt, Invitation of Knowledge, is available now. We'll be back soon with more editions of the VVN Music Podcast, including our upcoming conversation with John Karabi of the Dead Daisies. Remember that you can get the latest news on the veteran artists of rock, pop, soul, country, folk, and blues at vvnmusic.com, where you can also find back editions of our podcast with guests like Michael Schenker, Bobby Rydell, Marky Ramone, Nils Lofgren, and Lloyd Price. If you have any comments or questions about the website or this podcast, please send them to vvnnetwork at gmail.com. Our theme music is performed by Yahar. This program was recorded on August 10th, 2016, and is a production of the VVN Network, copyright 2016.